Trustee Shapiro? Here. Trustee McGrail? Here. Trustee Dizel? Here. Trustee Ryan? Here. Trustee Michaels? Here. Trustee Dwyer? Here. Mayor Kitchen? Here. We have a quorum. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America. All right, under my report, there's a couple things I'd like to talk about. Um, if anyone uh, is aware of someone who's upside down in their mortgage or having a hard time, uh, Illinois Housing Development Authority, and these are available out in the hallway, I put some of them out there, um, can help you refinance your loan, help get you out of trouble, and uh, I'd highly recommend that you, uh, uh, you look at that because if you're that far upside down and you're possibly going to lose your home, this is, this is a way out. Um, they're from the government, they're here to help. I know you don't believe that, but they really are. <laughs> so you could go to the website or you could pick up some of these in the hallway to get you started. Uh, it's athomeillinois.gov is the website, www.athomeillinois.gov. It's a good thing for our citizens who are, might have a, be having a little trouble. So. The other thing I want to talk about, um, I was at the uh, Southwest Conference of Mayors meeting the other night, and our president had just returned from Springfield. Um, some of you may not know that there is a constitutional amendment that's on the uh, presidential election ballot. It's about two paragraphs long. But basically what this amendment does, it would take away from municipalities their right to use the money that they get from their vehicle stickers, wheel taxes, gasoline taxes, et cetera, et cetera, and be put into a special fund that could be spent on nothing but road repairs. So they're taking away options for municipalities to do what they need to do to balance their budgets and to keep things operating smoothly. And the only thing that I'd like to add to that is I don't know why we would need a constitutional amendment to get the legislators in Springfield to do what's right. I don't, I don't get it. So um, I myself am going to vote no, and I urge, urge anyone and everyone to vote no to that constitutional amendment. So that's all I have to say about that. Here, here. Clerk's report. I have the presentation of the minutes of the September 19, 2016 board meeting. I also have requests for a block party for the residents of 12242 South Lawndale Avenue on October 15, 2016 from 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. Approval has been received from the Fire and Police Department, and that is all I have this evening. I'd like to add a couple more sentences to my report about that amendment. This is perpetrated by the big companies that build our highways and roads. It wasn't perpetrated by anybody but them. Um, for the village of Alsup, um, it will affect us less because we do actually put that money away and spend it on repairing our roads but a lot of towns use it to balance their budget. So um, they're very upset. The Illinois Municipal League was very upset about it, and uh, they're fighting it tooth and nail. So just wanted to add that in there. Attorney's report. No report. Engineer's report. I'm sure you're, you're aware that we have the night court permit for dual. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to... Uh, <clears throat> Yay, I dot. Yes, we will... Uh, have a new schedule from Gallagher Asphalt as far as getting the actual driveway reconstructed. Yeah, I, I was under the impression that they'd be out there this week. Not 100% sure. It depends upon NICOR, of course, actually doing their work. Right. Okay, that's great. Everything else going along? Yep. I noticed today that the uh, Illinois Department of Transportation had Pulaski tied up pretty good there at 115th Street with traffic backing up for blocks. Doing that, and they're paving Cicero right now as well. Yes. So. Avoid yep. that. <laughs> Good idea. Well, at least in the Cicero case, they're doing it at night. But even at that, they're still leaving still lanes blocked bad. during the day, which is not working out well. So, traffic, I don't, I don't know where to tell people to go anymore. You can't go down Pulaski. You can't go down Cicero. I guess it's Ridgeland or Kedzie. I, I, it's the only way you're going to get around it. It's gridlocked. And I, I, I 
I worry about emergency services being able to get through and you know luckily you know enough routes to scoot around most of it so let's just keep our fingers crossed and get through this <coughs> thank you at this point we've reached the public forum is there anyone here this evening that wishes to speak to anything on our agenda please come forward Can you hear me? Hello? Good evening. Um, I have a cold. So uh, just a couple quick things. Um, hopefully I don't insult any of you with weird body sounds while I'm trying to get this out. And I'm really not trying to intimidate uh, presidential candidate Trump if I start sniffling. So. So I would like to speak to action item C1. And um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is HR Manager Kathy Francis. I'm also known as the very nice lady in HR. <laughs> I'm concerned about what would have been said at the last meeting if I wasn't a nice lady. Or maybe nothing would have been said at all. <coughs> We had no idea that the world of politics was going to be such an emotional roller coaster. Not more than a few months ago, in a board meeting, Mr. Mayor, you begged me to stay. Now I feel that you have chosen to attempt to damage my professional reputation, making a public spectacle out of all of us. While I completely respect various opinions about my salary increase, let me remind you that I had already submitted my letter of resignation to this village. Your staff and specially selected employees supported my retention. Members of the Board of Trustees took the opportunity to reach out and acknowledge the calls and feedback they received regarding my departure. They asked me if I would consider staying and engaged me in conversations. I am so appreciative and thankful for those who encouraged me to stay. And while I specifically remember, Mr. Mayor, the day that you came to my office to tell me that you were disappointed I was leaving and to ask if I was going somewhere better I felt like I was then quickly dismissed without any further discussion. I'm not accustomed to responding to accusations. I don't do well with unprofessionalism. However, I will reply to comments made at the prior board meeting. But this has to stop. We all have a lot of work to do. I think you would be hard pressed to find someone who will provide the employees of this village with human resources services that inform them, enlighten them, and attempt to inspire them the way that I do. Am I tooting my own horn? You bet. So I have only refused one assignment asked of me in my 35 years as an HR professional. That involved a follow-up visit to Juarez, Mexico, where a company of mine was relocating. After having seen someone executed in the middle of the street, I remained too shaken to return and did refuse future assignment there. Outside of that, refusing versus stating that performing a task would bring awkwardness and discomfort to a situation does not equate to a refusal of duties. Next, I can promise you that you would be hard pressed to find a department head or any other employee here to tell you that I would not provide HR services to them. I respect both this position here 
and all of the staff at this village and for anyone to say that i have not assisted them with something h r related is simply not true information requested in an audit contained hundreds and hundreds of pages of information the purpose of such an audit was to hunt down anyone who could be identified as not following prior ordinances why was this requested it is my belief the request was made for the benefit of one individual no matter the report was pulled from payroll information and sent to you mr. mayor via email in July if you were expecting me to reference ordinances for the last 10 years based on those 600 pages of employees hire dates employment status and or contractual obligations no one could finish that in a lifetime next I did provide a copy of the entire employee handbook via email in June while this 89 page document does await ordinance and contractual updates because both changes to ordinances and contract negotiations were underway it is complete and requires legal review however may I remind you that the majority of the workforce here functions under a CBA which is a collective bargaining agreement and the other population of non-union employees follow written ordinances people here are not wandering around looking for day-to-day -day direction and written instructions in any event this outsourcing this project would have cost thousands of dollars I did it alongside offering the villages first ever health insurance open enrollment sessions that actually offered employees various health care options while cleaning up disorganized and unattended files while reining in an uncontrolled workers compensation system and creating an accident review board to focus on injury and illness prevention while implementing wellness programs here that look to improve the quality of our employees health while initiating employee timesheets so that time off is tracked and documented so that the village isn't paying out large sums of money when people leave and more salary comparisons for other villages and municipalities are easily available and can be found on their websites however as a sampling Matson, close in population to Elsip and close in headcount numbers up to five years of experience seventy six thousand eight hundred and three dollars annually over twenty years of experience one hundred three thousand nine hundred nine dollars annually Oak Forest close in population similar headcount numbers recently hired ninety five thousand annually Westmont close in population similar headcount numbers ninety three thousand five hundred thirty eight dollars annually Bellwood similar pop smaller population similar headcount numbers ninety five thousand annually you can look a recent HR salary survey called pay scale shows the 50 percent range for HR roles fall between eighty one thousand seven hundred and eighty three dollars annually for zero to three years of experience to one hundred eighteen thousand eight hundred nine dollars for twenty five plus years of experience that's a fifty percent range ladies and gentlemen sixty five percent fall between eighty seven five hundred sixteen dollars and one hundred twenty four thousand six hundred eight dollars what I want to raise now is the fact that a female managers increase of sixteen thousand six hundred forty dollars annually that is approved by the Board of Trustees is vetoed by the mayor when seven other double-digit increases received in recent years were not some given in consecutive years I am the only female employee 
whose raise has been issued a mayoral veto that's had to defend myself and that's had to prove myself to justify a raise. I dismissed a comment that was shared with me that I cannot make more than the mayor is being silly. But maybe it spoke louder about what's really happening. I don't know how or why this issue has caused so much drama. Let's get this worked up over hunger and peace. Not some 35-year professional who joined this village and whose goal was to guide all of us to the next level of employment satisfaction and just wants to get paid fairly for my work. Thank you. Anyone else? Moving along. Standing committees, finance, Trustee Shapiro. Mayor, I have a request for the approval of a list of payroll dated September 30th, 2016, as follows. Uh, on the earnings, on the gross payroll, $394,329.88. Minus the voluntary employee deduction and taxes of $133,493 for a net payroll of $260,000. $836.88. Next, I have the request for the approval of the counts payable dated October 3rd, 2016, as follows. Under corporate, $29,098.43. Under waterworks, I have uh, $60,774.80. Under Heritage 2, $35,080.55 for a total of $124,953.78. The next item on the agenda, uh, trustees, before I read this, <clears throat> uh, this was a request for the approval of a resolution approving a contract for electricity. Um, when we left the company blank, but I provided everyone uh, some notes uh, from our our consultant, our energy choices as our as our consultant for the uh, electricity. And um, what we wanted to do is the village wants to look to lock in a lower price than our current price uh, for as long as possible. It doesn't matter which company is the supplier. The last time the village picked Mid American Energy. This time, Energy Choices, the village consultant, received preliminary bids last week, which I gave all the trustees a copy of. Um, and uh, Dyna Energy had the lowest price. Later in the week, Source Power became the lowest bidder. However, after reviewing the terms of the contract, the bill payment time was too fast for our form of government, and therefore the payment would not have divided into pieces, which added complications. But Constellation Energy matched the price with the village terms. Therefore, a three-year contract with Constellation Energy is recommended by our consultant energy choices. So for item number three on the agenda, request for the approval of a resolution approving a contract for electricity with Constellation Energy. Sorry, Trustee, would you say their name again? Constellation. Constellation, okay. Energy. Um, I have a for a question. period of three years. For, I'm sorry, please add that on there for a period of three years. I also have another question. Yes. In the ordinance, it says not to exceed, so should we have the amount of $234,440 also included? Uh, Trustee Shapiro, who, I've, who selected, when did we select Energy Choices to be our consultant? They've, they've been our, uh, it's, they've been with us as long as uh, the village has been doing this, since, I think 2008. First time, I've, first time I've ever seen a report from these fellows. I've been here five it, years. I haven't seen one of these they, before. It, um, this is actually the first three-year contract. You did a two-year contract right. before and a two-year contract before that. So you should... If you've been here five years, we should have, you should have seen this twice before. Okay. Um, right now, 
with the prices uh, being considerably lower, they're making a recommendation for three years to lock in because the marginal difference uh, between the two prices is very small. Um, I, I, will, I will say one thing about the, the consultant. Um, I'm, I'm someone who always looks at how does somebody get paid. You know, I want to make sure that we're not paying somebody who has um, incentives to not give us the village the uh, you know best price um, that they have other incentives they get paid the same no matter which of these companies and they get paid by the companies and that's part of the bid price that comes in so um, and, and that was borne out um, by the fact that they, they switched the bidders twice in the last week to make sure they got the best um, price and terms they weren't they didn't have a in the um, in which company it was that came out, they just wanted it to be the lowest price. Can I ask, Mr. Alvin, did you did you um, research Constellation Energy? Um, I did not research Constellation Energy. Um, I've done. I know a few of these companies. Uh, when I was on the village board um, on a different thing, this this is not for. The residents, we do a couple of different and electricity things. I don't want anyone to get confused. No, this, this is, is just for the village folks. This is yeah. just for the village's accounts that are not with ComEd. So it has a tendency to be things like lights, lift station, um, uh, pumping station. Um, so uh, with with these, I know MC2 because that's the one when I was at village board, we selected for the residential. Um, I know Mid-American Energy because I grew up with them. They <coughs> got Illinois Gas and Electric, and they are our current suppliers. Um, actually, for the last two contracts, they've been the, the winning bid. MC Squared has only been, they've only been in business for four, they've been in business since 2011. I researched uh, some of these folks today. I'm more concerned with complaints against all the time if they've had, re, you know, if they've been resolved and whatnot. Actually, all these companies all have an A-plus or Better Business Bureau, which I'm, I'm happy to report. And all of their complaints have been resolved. I just want to know. I didn't maybe have the time that you have, but I just want to know in confidence: is the village making a good choice by going with Constellation Energy? That's all. Yeah, and and that's why I wanted to make sure I understood our energy choices and how they were paid and what it was they were doing. So I've had numerous conversations, email and voice, um, with her to make sure I understand the process, and I'm, I ended up being fairly comfortable with it. It really does come down to pricing. At the end of the day, the lines are still ComEd, um, so this is a supplier right. situation. And the billing is, will work with your, your billing? It will. There, there's going to be a little bit of, um, uh, of work uh, on AP side because you're changing um, accounts. Um, but that's a one-time deal, and especially that's another. I mean, the two-year versus three-year um, is nice because, you know, you're locking in – electricity prices off in the future with a very little uh, cost difference between them. They're negligible. But the other nice thing moving to three years is, you know, there's a bit of work switching who your suppliers are in any situation. Sure. And, uh, you know, we minimize that by having it be a three-year contract. Okay. So I, I'm fine with that. Uh, you know, I, I got a question, Kent. Uh, is it a reduced rate for the next three years? Yes. Do you have a ballpark figure of what we'll be saving by doing yeah, that so, for the next um, three years? And, and these prices um, are only good sort of for 24 hours. So when your packet came out, it was um, it mentioned that uh, today would be a new set of prices. Um, that was put in front of you because um, it came this afternoon, both the, the new recommendation letter mm -hmm. um, and a new price, which is um, – uh, I'm finance. I'm cheap. I don't usually print in color, but this particular time, um, printing in color made sense. And if you look at it on a uh, yearly basis, uh, what we've been paying right now is $243,202, and this would be $234,440. Um, so it's about a $9,000 savings, a uh, tiny bit less than $9,000 savings per year. Um, but Nine thousand dollars savings per year, three years. Uh, we'll, yeah. you know, absolutely. There's not many things go down in price. We'll yeah. definitely take that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, the clerk had a question as to what to put on the not to exceed for 36 months. Yeah. Not to exceed 234,000. No, no, that's an estimate. 
so um, we're not going to have no the, what you would do the, what you do is it cite the the price per kilowatt hour which is 5020 cents per okay, kilowatt the reason, hour the reason why i question that i have it right here the reason why i question that is because in the ordinance the resolution excuse me it says in an amount not to exceed right and what it, what i would per put, year right so that ordinance that resolution needs to be changed to kilowatt hour just where it's blank it would just fill in um for dollars 0 0.050 okay. per kilowatt hour okay so not to exceed but it also the wording has to be changed per kilowatt hour well just i mean Instead that all goes in the year. blank well that is per year for each year dollars per kilowatt hour just gets filled in the blank yeah per kilowatt we, yeah hour we didn't have the price when we this i understand i just want to know what we need to put in there before i sign and and um this is one of those few sometimes the um, things can be signed the next day um this is one of those few things that should the board go with this recommendation and pass this um, I actually have to stay tonight, make the copies, get them out the door because uh, the the prices will expire. This isn't one of those that we sign tomorrow. So in other words, he's saying let's not make it a late night. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, last thing on my agenda is a request for the approval to to authorize intervention in the property tax appeal board appeals for First Midwest property located at 119. Uh, 1900 South Pulaski. Uh, trustees, uh, one more thing, I, which is not on the agenda, but uh, I'd like to have a finance meeting uh, next Monday at 6.30 if everyone's available. Uh, please try to make it for that because we have a lot on the agenda to discuss. It'll be October 10th. October 10th, yes. And that is all I have from finance. Fire, uh, what, Trustee. What, I'm sorry. sorry. What, what time did you want that, John? 6.30 if possible. All right, thank you. Fire Trustee Michaels. I have a list of bills and timesheets, an update on the status of hiring replacement firefighters. Chief, you want to give us that update? Yeah, we're putting two firefighters through the hiring process. Uh, one has uh, completed his process. The last part is the medical. The second gentleman he has his medical tomorrow, and we'll find out results between Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, we will be starting them on days on October 17th. They'll be on days for two weeks for recruit training, and they should be on shift uh, between the 30th and 31st of this month. And this is uh, to replace two firefighters, one that's uh, retired and one that went to another department. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, I have a request for approval of an expenditure, expenditure of $16,810 to replace 22 windows of the living areas at both fire stations. This expenditure, expenditure has been approved in the 2016-2017 budget. Three quotes were received for the project and the lowest quote belonging to Murphy Windows. The Elsa Fire Department will be hosting its annual open house on October 8th. It will be held at Fire Station 2 from Lair uh, on Laramie at, from 1 p.m. till 3 p.m. Uh, this is this Saturday. Uh, I encourage everyone to attend that. Bring your kids, your grandkids. Uh, this is a real good family event, and uh, they'll come out and see some uh, real good things uh, as far as uh, the fire department is related. Chief, can you get a little more information on the activities? Yeah, hopefully it's a nice day. The last three years we've lucked out. We've had good weather, and it looks like it's so far. Um, we have uh, uh, training for people that want to learn how to use a fire extinguisher, so we have live fire extinguisher training. We do the side-by-side -side burns with the sprinkler fitters next door to show the difference if your house has a sprinkler or non-sprinkler system. Um, we have the mini course for the kids again with uh, the miniature fire trucks where they can drive and uh, um, use the holes and uh, knock down the, the pretend fire. Um, they're going to have a jumpy house out there. Um, what else? We have also have the fire pole this year that we're going to be getting from Oak Lawn. So, again, a lot of different activities plus tours of the stations and our fire equipment. It's a real good family event. Thank you, Chief. Uh, that's all I have, Mayor. Police, Trustee Shapiro. Uh, Mayor, other than the uh, normal list of bills and timesheets, I have no report. Public Works, Trustee Dwyer. I have a request for approval to issue a $32 refund to James Breeze for a vehicle sticker purchased. He is 62 years old, and the sticker should have been free. Mike also gave me an update about what they're working on right now. Um, 
White Line Construction started work on the sidewalk replacement program last week. Over 450 sidewalk squares are being replaced, and work is expected to be completed the week of October 19th. Cook County Mosquito Abatement was working in the village of Alsop on September 22nd, treating standing water and catch basins for mosquito control. MWRD is assisting Public Works in cleaning and removing dead or broken trees from the Central Park Creek this week. Public Works also continues to work on sewer and street repairs before the winter weather starts. In addition, crews have been painting and updating crosswalks all around the schools within the village. Uh, the City of Joliet is hosting a public roads de-icing workshop on October 4th. Mike will be attending this class along with three other employees from his department. This workshop will fo focus on new NPDES permit requirements, chloride environmental impacts, communication, strategies, and de-icing program updates. As you know, this time of year is extremely busy for public works as we try to complete projects before the winter begins and asphalt plans start to lose or start to close for the season. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact Mike. And that's all I have under public works. Mr. Trustee, I'd like to tell you that today um, they were pouring concrete all over the place. One of the squares they poured right out in front of the village hall, someone climbed over the tape and walked through the concrete. Oh, no. So we'll have to have the con contractor back out to fix it. Oh, my. Wow. Obviously, it was done on purpose <laughs> for whatever reason. Building, uh, Trustee Michaels. I have a list of bills and time sheets. It's all I have for building. Sewer and water, Trustee Dizel. Presentation of the employee time records and the list of bills. That's all I have, Mayor. License, Trustee Ryan. Uh, Mayor, the license committee requests approval for for a list of licenses dated today, October 3rd, 2016. We had a couple of new business license applications, um, which I know a couple of these may be renewals. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe they're just changing hands over. One's for official haircuts at 11514 South Pulaski. It's the barbershop. Another was for the VJM Group LLC. They're at 4000 West 127th Street, and that's a convenience store and gas station. And the last one was for Windy City Ice Cream. They're at 11641 Ridgeland Avenue, and uh, this is for the ice cream trucks that are going to work out of that location. That's all we have, sir. Economic Development Trustee Ryan. Um, in everyone's, in all the trustees' mailboxes was a... Um, presentation of the September activities report by the Mannheim group this evening we had a committee meeting at 630 and short discussion uh, moving forward next month um, the Mannheim group is is making appointments with existing business owners uh, to discuss um, whether or not they'd still like to participate in the TIF renovations available to TIF eligible projects that may they may want to take advantage of uh, we also discussed the uh, TIF 1, 127th Street TIF that the Finance Department and our consultant, Kane McKenna, will be filing a report on how funding will be segregated to support any residual issues um, from that, that TIF that's going to expire pretty soon by possibly withholding uh, a, a certain dollar amount. We actually we said for the record close to $600,000 and release approximately 100000 per year as needed uh, and considered a surplus over the course of like the next 10 years. Uh, we also decided, um, I'm sorry, we're all, they're also deciding how much money will be utilized on the Plasky TIF. That's still to be de uh, to de still to be determined. Uh, we also discussed possibly, um, and actually uh, we were encouraged, I'd like to encourage all the trustees uh, to please take a look at some of the roads over in the Deer Park area that um, that is a TIF eligible expense that we may be able to utilize for some road replacement. Right now, MFT monies have become very thin, and when it's when we're they're not as available as they used. To. In other words, we're working with the expenses that we have for all the regular streets, but those few streets in that neighborhood are part of this existing TIF, and it is a TIF eligible expense to replace a few of those streets. So we'd like to take a look at those right away, and if that's how we're going to earmark monies, we need to do so sooner than later. The, uh, Mike. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, Mike. I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, thank you for making that suggestion out too. So, I've been back. I'm not sure. I'm be honest with you. I'm not sure how old those roads are. Do you, off the top of your head? Uh, hold on, about 20 years. Twenty some years. 
But again, if we can improve or at least repair some of those streets, that would be great back in there. Um, and then finally, uh, three local business owners who weren't available to attend our TIF 101 meeting that we had back on September 9th have now started applications to participate in TIF eligible renovations. So again, we welcome those businesses and look forward to um, the Mannheim Group engaging with more existing businesses as well as new ones on the Pulaski Avenue TIF. That's all I have, sir. Special Committee reports, Village Properties, Trustee Michaels. I have a list of bills, and also I have a letter that would um, uh, answer one and two uh, with the following. Uh, I would like to provide the mayor and board an update on Heritage 1 and 2 uh, have passed their building inspections with no violations. Uh, this is a letter from Roger Early, our Village Properties Manager. Also, I have a very successful summer with the pool in both complexes and will be closing on October 13th. There is a new state law in effect that the entrance exit doors for the pool must be self-closing, self-latching for safety. We have placed signs on the uh, sliding doors to make um, residents aware that those doors are no longer to be used to gain access to the pool. They must go through the doors in the bathrooms. We have replaced those doors to be in accordance with the new state law. If there's any con uh, questions or concerns, contact Roger early. Roger, thank you. Uh, that's pretty amazing as far as passing the building inspection, no violations. That's a 152-unit complex for both of them. It's 152 apartment building, you know, apartments. Uh, so that's a pretty good job. Job well done. Thank you. That's all, Mayor. Insurance Trustee McGreal. I have no report, but I just like to ask um, Kathy, how's the flu sh program going? Flu shop program going. Okay, thank you. Yes? Um, and, and Kathy and I are working uh, on trying to finalize the um, insurance, health insurance for employees and retirees. Um, that's, we're probably going to have that finalized within a day. Um, and so later in October, um, and not so much later, um, it could be coming up somewhat soon, we're going to be looking at open enrollment. Um, I would encourage all uh, retirees and, and uh, employees and their spouses uh, to look for those. Uh, there are going to be some additional options for people. Um, so this is definitely an open enrollment. It's not the standard every year one. This is definitely one to encourage attendance. Um, and I'd encourage the, the department heads. Um, I know Kathy's been working with you guys to encourage your employees to, to come on the clock. This is uh, one of those times that that makes sense to do. And then wellness would be in November uh, and December, and Kathy is uh, coordinating that, doing a good job with that. Thank you. <coughs> Ordinance and legislation, Trustee Dizel. Mayor, as an action item, I have a motion to reconsider the adoption of an ordinance establishing the compensation for human, for manager of human resources of the village of Alsip, Cook County, Illinois, which is previously the ordinance 2016-9-3. To override Mayor Kitching's veto. I'll second that motion. Was that a motion? Yes, sir. And that was a motion and second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Roll call number one, Trustee Shapiro. Abstain. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Dizel. Yes. Trustee Ryan. No. Trustee Michaels. Yes. Trustee Dwyer. Yes. Motion carries to override Mayor's veto for ordinance number 2016-9-3. Mayor, next I had uh, originally Hold put on... Hold up a minute. I, I feel the need to make a comment okay. on, on that. I apologize. Um, we have had hearings here, both public and for the businesses, explaining that the financial situ the situation this village is in is not good. Repeatedly, I have told you, taxes are going to have to go up. There's no way to pay for the things that are about to come down on us, i.e. pensions and health care for our employees. Therefore, I feel that um, I think this board should share um, the pain the taxpayers are going to feel. And 
we are required to set the salaries for the trustees and the mayor in the next term 180 days before that uh, happens. So I have put together a sample ordinance, which I will give you all a copy of before we leave here. And uh, without going to all the legalities of, of, of the whole ordinance, I will tell you that um, the mayor's shall, salary shall be $50,000 for the next term. The salary of the clerk I'm going to leave in place because, it, honestly, she's overworked. Compensation for the village trustee shall be $8,000, and uh, I will uh, give you copies of all this. I'd like this to be considered at the next board meeting. Mayor, could I ask you a question about the veto? Did, did you compose the veto yourself? Yes. Did you write it? And Attorney Elliott, did you review it before the mayor read it? Did you review the veto before the mayor read it? I read it maybe five minutes beforehand. Okay. Mayor, what is a tenured employee that's listed in here twice? Tenured employee? Mm -hmm. So has it been around for a while? You've got employees here basically that have been here for 15 or 20 years and they never got a 33% raise. But we don't have tenure in the in the village. We have it in the school district. Okay, that's, that's a term that refers to employees that have been here for years. Moving along. Well, trustee there, there were many um, inconsistent, inconsistencies and inaccuracies in the veto. And, this, is, um, uh, this is not during, a debate. That during was, that old was business, I will go through them. Thank you. This is not a debate. Trustee Dizel. Um, I had a request for the approval of an ordinance that amends Chapter 15 and a half. There's actually some items in here. Uh, one of the other trustees had provided me some information. Uh, I found some additional uh, items in here that I think that warrants uh, further discussion by the board. So, uh, Trustee Shapiro, if you don't mind, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have an ordinance in the legislation um, committee meeting coincide with the finance. Do you sure. think there'll be time in that day, or are you going to... If, if, mark a, uh, if we uh, if we hold the length of the conversation, and Mr. Oliver down, yeah, yes. Yeah, All right, give him some weak batteries on the, sure. on the mic. All right. the, the finance one is going to be long, but uh, you know those are both two two important topics. So if we can, yeah, because actually uh, they're part and parcel. Some of it has to deal with the finance aspect of it. Yes. So uh, I'd like to coordinate that if I can. So with regards, uh, that's going to be item E. I'd like to uh, actually table that to 1017 and uh, we'll discuss it further at a committee meeting on 1010 with the uh, finance. And then uh, lastly, I have an action item uh, per the village ordinance. The village board reserves the right to establish the committee assignments and per the approval of, the, and of establishing a new standing committee known as the Human Resources at the 919 board meeting. The village board must establish and approve the membership this time. So I would like to uh, open the floor to request nominations for three memberships of the Human Resources Committee. Any trustee? Any trustee? Any trustee? I'm interested. I'd like to be on the committee. I know that, uh, ooh, yeah. I'm also interested. Trustee McGreal, you said you're yes. interested. All right, so we got trustees uh, Dwyer and McGreal. Any other trustees interested in serving on this committee? Right. I'll be on then, it. I'll be on it if you don't want to be. Uh, if you want to, then that's fine. Otherwise, I'll, I'll certainly throw my head in there. If your desires. I'm on the economic committee that recently was driven up. So if you want to, I'll be more than happy to step down. You can have that. Okay, then I would throw my name in the head as well. Uh, anybody else interested? All right. So we've got the three: uh, Trustee Dwyer, Trustee McGreal, and myself. And then uh, anybody want to put forth a nomination for the chairperson for this committee. Yes, I want to uh, have Trustee Dwyer as the chair. All right, and I know Trustee McGrill had also requested that. I know that there was a, a talk about a co-chair. Um, are either you two amicable to one or the other uh, instead of both? Because I don't think we can have a both. Is there a problem with co-chairing? Yeah, I don't. Nope. What is the issue with co-chairing? Oh, Mayor Attorney. Madam Attorney, uh, is such a there thing a problem with co-chairs? 
Well, your rules don't really call for co-chairs. I mean, it calls for chairs, and you could have an, you know. Yeah, I mean, really the way procedurally we do it is just the figurehead to call the meetings, and we've been fortunate that we've all acted as adults when coming to the different committees, whether or not we're on them to be able to participate and have open discussion. So one or the other? I'd be happy to be the chairperson for that committee. So would I, but if you want to, you can do it, Ms. Trustee Dwyer. All right, so you have a motion from Trustee Michaels with regards to Trustee Dwyer as being that chair. Do you have a second? I'll second. All right, Trustee McGrill. All in favor for that? Well, the clerk should. Oh, I apologize, you're right. We should also make a motion. Clerk should state him in time. Hello, Madam Clerk. I was taking the sales right out of the tent with the batteries. Oh, I see. Oh, I'll let you, I'll let you fly, you know. No, no, you're better at this. Motion for a second, call the roll. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, roll call number two. There is a motion that Trustee Dwyer, Trustee McGreal, and Trustee Dizell, as members of the Human Resource Committee, with the chairperson being Trustee Dwyer. Roll call number two. Trustee Shapiro. Yes. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Dizell. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Present. Trustee Michaels. Yes. Trustee Dwyer. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, can I have a clarification? Is that an abstain? And you can only vote yes, no, or abstain. Present, according to Robert's rules, is a soft no. And present goes with the ma majority. Present does majority. not go with the majority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that it. You sure? I think it yeah. does. It does. It, it goes does. with the majority. One, tell mm -hmm. me my job. I know. <laughs> I, I checked. I checked Robert's rules before the meeting. Yeah, <laughs> it goes with the majority. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess there. I have nothing else, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. All righty then. Why not? IT, Trustee Ryan. Uh, no report this evening. Bolt launch, Trustee Ryan. Bolt launch is still doing well. And uh, thank you, um, Public Works, for some of the improvements we did down there recently. And uh, did some nice repairs. Were we able to take care of those overnight lights too, Mike? We were. Thanks. Okay, that's really important for any kind of emergency situation <laughs> down there too. No, and that's all we have, sir. Planning and zoning, Trustee Dwyer. I have no report this evening, Mayor. Human Resources, Trustee Dwyer. Well, I, we don't have anything to report tonight other than the wonderful speech that uh, our HR person gave this evening. Um, other than that, I have no report right now. Are there any petition presentations, petitions, or communications which we have not covered under ordinary business? Uh, I have one, Mayor. Um, actually, just walk, walking into tonight's meeting, um, Trustee Michaels, would it be possible to put together a, um, a building committee meeting I had a call from a property owner and um, said that um, he's got a property over at like 5959 West 115th Street and said he was denied a permit for a new leaser that wanted to um, occupy properties there by our building inspector. I'd like to see his report on, on why he's denying that, 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 ten, that person. Say again, what was that address? 5959 Mayor 115th 115th Street. Oh yeah, they wanted to fill it up full of junk, junk and wrecked cars, and our ordinance calls for that to be for that. You can have that, but you have to have it indoors, not in, not in a gravel parking lot. Okay, because I I just asked the question. Oh, I appreciate you were in on that thing. Great, you know, because I, I did ask. I I just got this right when I was walking in the meeting. And let me tonight, let me so. add one more thing to that. Okay. We're talking about Walsh's towing. Right. And after the building commissioner told them, no, you can't do that. Okay. The next thing we know, it's full of cars. Really? They did it anyway. No, well, again, I got that five minutes but before no I was walking in tonight's meeting. Okay. So he, so he's so it's not it doesn't meet the criteria is what you're saying for that. Right. that okay. Because the way I was explaining to me, it sounded like it was like a police tow yard, like a transfer exactly. kind of spot and stuff yeah. like that too. Looks like you have a okay. job. You got a job. <laughs> okay. So well, they can have it here, but it's got to be inside. Exactly. Okay. That's fine. I didn't know you didn't meet the criteria. That's fine. Is there anything else? Nothing. No, sir. Um, 
Trustees, are there any items you wish to remove from the consent agenda? Need a motion to establish the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Oh, wait, a, wait, wait a minute. We, if you're gonna, you should make a motion to table item E. I mean, we should okay, be a formal I apologize, motion yeah. and a vote on that. Yeah, I already so had it down in my notes. Just want to that for now. Table to 1017, item E, Mayor. Is that a motion? It is a motion. Okay. Item. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion and a second. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Now I'm confused. <coughs> we have a motion on October 17th, item E, or is it on the consent agenda? Well, it really should be pulled, and then he should make the motion, but... Yes, right, because he had it pulled. Right. I had that down. <laughs> right. Okay. The original motion for the consent ag agenda to establish... Who made the motion to establish the consent agenda? Second. Raise your hand. Don't be shy. Thank you. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> Madam Clerk, would you add the remaining information? Oh, I most definitely would love to do that. B it should read $394,329.88. C should read $124,000. Thousand nine hundred fifty three dollars and seventy eight cents. D should read approval of a resolution approving contract for electricity with consolidation constellation energy for thirty six months. That will now become resolution number twenty sixteen dash ten dash R dash one. E has been tabled until October 17th board meeting. So roll call number three to establish the consent agenda. Trustee Shapiro. Yes. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Dizelle. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Michaels. Yes. Trustee Dwyer. Yes. Motion carries to establish. <clears throat> Entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Roll call number four. Trustee Shapiro. Yes. Trustee McGreal. Yes. Trustee Dizel. Yes. Trustee Ryan. Yes. Trustee Michaels. Yes. Trustee Dwyer. Yes. Motion carries to approve the consent agenda as presented. Mm -hmm. Is that to establish or approve? That was to approve. Oh, okay. Um, that's it. Okay. Is there any unfinished business before the board? Any new business? Trustee, you have the wording for the closed session? Anybody? Mayor, I move that we uh, adjourn to a uh, closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, compensation, and discipline performance or dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel of the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2C1. Also to discuss the collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or the representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules with one or more classes of employees pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2C2. And finally, to discuss litigation when an action against affecting or on behalf of a particular public body has been filed and is pending before a court or administrative tribunal, or when the public body finds that an action is probable or imminent, in which case the basis for the finding shall be recorded and entered into the minutes of the closed session meeting pursuant to 5 ILCS 120-2C11. I'll second that. A motion and a second. By the way, thank you. I'd have been out of breath. <laughs> Please call the roll. Roll call number five. Trustee Shapiro? Yes. Trustee McGreal? Yes. Trustee Dizel? Yes. Trustee Ryan? Yes. Trustee Michaels? Yes. Trustee DeWire? <coughs> yes. Motion carries to go into closed session.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be returning back in here if, if for no other reason to, than to adjourn. Um, you're welcome to stick around if you like to. This may take a while, but I do not believe that there's going to be anything else voted on this evening. Thank you for coming out. Trustees, uh, ten minutes across the hall, please. Thank you. Got to read it.